Hi there. Good evening to you. Welcome to church wherever you are. I want you to tune in now. This is our Wednesday Holy Communion service. And I want you to invite your friends, invite your loved ones, invite everybody. Tell them pastor is on. Now is the time for service. And uh, I have a very important message for you. And uh, today we are going to take Holy Communion. So I want you to prepare Holy Communion wherever you are. Get bread, get juice, get any drink that you have together with anything that you can buy it in honor of the Lord. Put it around you. If you don't have bread, get chapati. If you don't have chapati, get wafers. If you can't get wafers, get a tapa. Whatever that you can use. Just get a portion, put it aside. We are going to break the Lord's table today. Glory to God. You know, I want you at this time to invite your loved ones, invite your friends. Tell everybody church has begun. Church has begun. And um, share with the, as many people as possible. Let them know that we are in church. Those that are watching on YouTube, you're going to watch this video a little later because uh, today we had some challenges and so we couldn't come to you live on YouTube. But next service, we'll be having our YouTube audience as well joining in. Glory to God. And so I hope you're ready with your family, with your children, with your loved ones, with your friends in your household where we are having fellowship. You see, look, I've been telling you about these things. The future of the church is the online church. This is the time for us to be activist Christians and get to know that the word of God is what we live by. And when an opportunity presents like this, in the realm of the spirit, we are one. We are together and we are lot. And so tell your people wherever they are, tune in, participate in the worship, participate in the prayer, participate in your amen, in your praises to God. The Lord is right where you are and God is going to perform miracles wherever you are. If you have loved ones that are sick, you have those that are tormented, bring them close, let them come closer. Distance is not a barrier. God will touch them where they are. We've had instances where we prayed on phone. One of the testimonies that I received recently, maybe I'll read it for you. I got this testimony from Katakui. It's one of the testimonies that I got from Katakui. They sent to me of a miracle that happened while we're in Katakui. And this miracle happened to somebody who was far off, very far off, but the miracle still happened. Listen to this. He says, Papa, praise God. Yesterday when you ministered, I connected someone on video called Deep Village called Tisai Akide. Akide. Tisai Akide. That man was bewitched for seven years. He was not walking. He was just carried by his daughters. But after you ministered in the crusade in Katakui, he can now walk alone. Glory to God. You can see what happened to the man. He was tormented seven years, carried alone by himself, by the daughters, and he was carried like a baby. He did not even come. He was far away. I don't know where Tisai is, but that's what happened from Tisai Akide. They just called. I did not even make those calls. I didn't even announce to the people and say, let's do miracles over the phone. But this sister had faith in the Lord and connected this family. And by God's supernatural grace and ability, the man was set free and he started walking after seven years. Seven years being carried like a baby. Glory to God. And so wherever you are, don't be afraid. Oh, you really don't need my touch. What you need is the touch of the Lord Jesus, whom I represent and whose I am. And right where you are, if you can tune into the atmosphere that is in this room, you know, I'm coming to you from my office. If you can tune into the atmosphere that is in this room, 
a miracle is inevitable. It is just automatic. You receive healing. You receive deliverance. You receive every blessing of God. And so I want your heart to be tuned in now. Turn away from everything. I know some of you could be preparing dinner. Some of you could be taking tea. Whatever that you're doing, this is not time for that. If it was a normal Wednesday without this thing, you would be in the house of God now. So I just want you to treat it like you are in the house of God now. You are in church right now. I want you to treat it that way. You are in church right now. And so stop every activity. In your house, if you have children, settle them down. No more running. Turn off the TV if you can. Turn off everything that is around you and pay attention to the word of God because God is going to talk to you right now and God is going to bless you and God is going to heal you. He is going to perform miracles in your life right now. So give attention to the presence of God that is coming to your house right now, wherever you are. Hallelujah. We will begin by singing a chorus unto the Lord. And wherever you are wanting to participate with all your heart, lift your voice. Be bold. Don't let the environment intimidate you. Don't let the atmosphere intimidate you. Be bold and shout out your praises to God as I sing along with you from the studio. Join me from wherever you are to the glory of God Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I shout my praise to you. Lord, I shout my praise to you. Lord, I shout my praise to you. You have done great and mighty things, dear Lord, I shout my praise to you, yes Lord, Lord, I shout my praise to you, yes Lord, Lord, I shout my praise to you. You have done great and mighty things. Yes, Lord, I shout my praise to you. My Lord, Lord, I shout my praise to you. Yes, Lord, Lord, I shout my praise to you. You have done great and mighty things. Wherever you are, lift your hands toward heaven and we pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the Holy Spirit whom you've given unto us. Thank you for my brothers and sisters that are joining in from all over the nations of the earth in worship and in praise and in fellowship. We reverence you, Lord, and we magnify your name. We know that this is your time to heal us. This is your time to bless us. This is your time to save us. This is your time to restore us. This is your time to do something new in our lives. And we thank you because you're with us. Thank you for the ministry of angels. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace that is strong on us. Thank you for utterance granted me and understanding of the word of God that is given to each one of us. And for the mighty miracles, signs and wonders that will erupt today as a result of this service. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you because I'm anointed. And miracles will follow my preaching. Mighty signs, mighty wonders 
mighty miracles. The captives will be set free. The, the sick will be healed. The bound and the oppressed will be delivered. Your mighty hand of power will be made manifest in the lives of your people as you bless them mightily. Lord, I thank you for the open heavens. Thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the spirit of gifts of God that are activated now. And thank you because your word is powerful and active, working mighty miracles in our lives right now. Blessed be your precious name. In Jesus' name we receive with thanks all that you've got for us. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. Ah, once more, I want to welcome you to this Wednesday communion service. And today, I want to announce something very important. That from today until the time when all this quarantine is done, every day we are going to take Holy Communion. Especially in the lunch hour times, we will be taking Holy Communion. Glory to God. I want you to get your notebook, get your pen. I'm going to tell you the reason why we must take Holy Communion at such a time as this. Well, to begin with, the, 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 the reason is staring us on our face. Never in the history of the church has ever been a time whereby everybody has been quarantined like the way we are quarantined to pray in our houses, you know, because of this virus that is wreaking havoc in the nations of the earth. In our own beloved motherland, we've been told so far 14 cases have confirmed and people are in hospital battling for their lives. But we are praying for them. We know that God is the healer and we believe that our God answers prayers and will bring them out of that situation. But in the first place, we don't need to enter in there. Yesterday, I posted something on Facebook. And I say, uh, we go to the gym because we want to keep fit. And we wash our hands right now. They are telling us to wash our hands and to take care of all these precautions. And uh, in my house, I practice these things. We have water. Everybody who comes to my house, you wash your hands. Every one of us in our house, we wash our hands all the time. And we try as much as possible to observe all the, the precautions that were being given. But you see, all that we are doing is in order to avoid infection humanly. But did you ever know that divine health comes from God? You can do all these things. All these things you can do, but if that health has not been given you, all of a sudden, something can happen. A disaster can happen. You see, if, if the experts, the doctors can get infected, you know, how about you, an ordinary person who's not even careful about what is taking place. And so that's why I want you to know that only God can give you divine health. And God has shown us a way in which we can walk in divine health. And that is why I am telling you from today on, the only remedy to coronavirus, the real remedy to coronavirus, the real insurance, the real vaccine is the Holy Communion. And so today, I'm going to share with you from the Word of God the blessings of taking Holy Communion. As we are taking care of all these precautions, as we are praying to God, as a child of God, there is a higher insurance that you have. And that insurance is Holy Communion, the communion of the Lord, the breaking of the body of the Lord Jesus. And therefore, take your pen, take your notebook, take your Bible, and let's begin to share the Word of God. Hallelujah. The power of Holy Communion is what I'm going to share with you. The Bible says, I wish we can be sharing these scriptures, whatever scripture that I mentioned, in order to help each one of us. If possible, you can just post them on the page. You can post them on the WhatsApp groups. You can post them somewhere. Help spread the message. Help to spread the good news. Take the gospel everywhere. As I'm sharing these things, Share with somebody else. Share with a group. You can save somebody. From tomorrow onwards, every time that I will be coming for that lunch hour prayer meeting, that will be Holy Communion. We'll always end it with communion. We'll break it. We'll break the table of the Lord together. Now, 
I want to read to you a few scriptures from the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew chapter 26. I'm reading to you verses number 26. The Bible says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it. Can I have my Holy Communion nearby so that I can, I can demonstrate and illustrate while I am ministering? If, if you have it, please feel free and bring it on. Amen. And as they were eating, St. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. St. Matthew, I mean St. Mark, St. Mark chapter number 14 and verses number 22. St. Mark 14, 22 says, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, and say, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I'll drink no more of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung and hewn, they went out into the mountain of olives. You see, Jesus used to see. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I want you to listen to this very, very well. Why we must take Holy Communion at such a time as this? First of all, what is Holy Communion? Holy Communion... This is the breaking of bread and drinking of a cup in remembrance of the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus took bread when they were eating. Can I have my bread, please? Can I have my cup, please? And my bread? You see, they were eating together. And Jesus took a portion of bread. And as he took it, the Bible says he broke it and then he told him, say, this is my body which is broken for you. And in the same way he took a cup and he gave all of them to drink of it. And he said, drink you all of this cup for this is the blood, this is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins and for the New Testament. And he told us, he said, do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. He did not specify how many times, but he said unto us, he instructed us, that every time that we remember him, every time that we are remembering him, we remember him by breaking this bread and by drinking this cup in memory of what he did for us on the cross, how we lay down his life for our salvation. You see, the Lord Jesus, in order to save us, he went through a very shameful and a very gruesome death. And he suffered shame and pain, not because he was a criminal, not because he was a martyr, not because he had done something terrible, but he did it for your sake and my sake. Hallelujah. So that he can buy our salvation so that he can, he can redeem us back to God. He can buy us back to God. He bore the judgment of God. The punishment of the original sin was laid upon him. God punished him exhaustively and exhausted all his wrath on him. And so he told us, he said, all the time that you break this bread, 
All the time that you take this cup, he said, do it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so every time that we partake of the bread of the Lord and we partake of the cup in the name of Jesus, we proclaim the death and the sufferings and we testify that Jesus was judged for our sake. Hallelujah. It's a testimony that we give that he was judged for our sake so that we do not have to go through another judgment. Especially at such a time as this, when epidemics are putting lives in confusion, wreaking havoc in the lives of men, let me tell you all the sufferings in the world is as a result of the fall of man. And so death was injected into the world by Satan because man had disobeyed God. Man had gone against God. But when Christ came, he bore the punishment so that he can take away sin from the earth and all the consequences of sin which included death. And of which when I'm talking about death, I'm talking about all the companions of death, which is poverty, which is curses, which is sickness and disease, which is epidemics, which is sorrow. He took it upon himself. And you see, God did not begin now the work of the Holy Communion. God started it way back from the Garden of Eden. You see, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 18, He says, I'm not ashamed of the cross. I'm not ashamed of the message of the cross. Because unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. But it is foolishness unto the world. Now, you need to understand this. That God uses foolish things of the world in order to show His power, to manifest His salvation, to manifest His grace. And so as a result of this, it's very important for us to know that the real remedy for coronavirus is the communion of the Lord Jesus. It may be foolishness to the world, it may be foolishness to the wise, but unto us, the children of God, the Bible says it is for our salvation. You see, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, this is where the principle of Holy Communion was introduced. Genesis chapter 3 and verses number 21. You see, the Bible says in the whole story, if I may give the story, Adam had sinned against God. And Adam, God had told him, he said, the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. And Adam still went ahead after being tempted by the devil and he ate of the forbidden fruit that God had told him not to eat. And so Adam was supposed to die instantly. But look at what God did. Instead of Adam dying instantly, God did something immediately. He killed an animal, and that animal atoned, took the place of Adam. And Adam was given the clothes of that animal. Him and his wife were covered so that they don't have to die. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verses 21, it says, And unto Adam also, unto his wife, did the Lord make coats of skins, and clothed them. God made clothes of skins and clothed Adam and Eve. So ask yourself a question. Where did God get the skins from? God killed an animal that was supposed to die. I mean, Adam was supposed to die that same day together with Eve. But God decided to kill an animal in the place of Adam and Eve and get them clothes as a testimony and say, look, you are supposed to fall dead this day. But an animal has died in your place. And the Bible says Adam lived for another 938 years. 938 years. In order to have Adam and Eve. I mean, in order to have Adam and Eve live that long, an animal had to die. So God substituted. He brought a substitution for Adam and Eve. Glory to God. And it did not just start there. Even in the Old Testament, there was a type of Holy Communion that the Lord brought. In the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter number 12, from verses 1, the Bible says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This man shall be unto you the beginning of months, 
It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep or, of the go or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike on the two side posts on the upper door of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with the bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw or sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head and his legs and the intestines thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remains until the morning shall burn with fire. And they shall eat it with their loins guarded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hands. And you shall eat it in haste. In the, it's the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout all your generations. You shall keep it a feast and by an ordinance forever. Now you can see Israel had been in bondage for 400 years. God performed so many judgments on Egypt. He brought the flies. He caused the darkness. He, he turned the water into blood. He caused the frogs to come. He caused a lot of boils, devastation on Egypt. But the Bible says when God performed all these plagues, Pharaoh could not let go Israel. Whenever he did it, Pharaoh just took it as a joke. Until when there was an invocation of a type of Holy Communion. That was when now deliverance came. And so Israel was commanded to celebrate Passover in their days. Because on that particular night, the age of death was going to visit Egypt. And all the firstborns of Egypt were going to die. And so the blood and, and the, the lamb, the, the blood of the lamb that was stricken on the doors was safety and deliverance for Israel. The second thing that I noticed from this is that God instructed them to take meat and blood without, I mean, meat and bread without blood and mix it with bitter herbs. Reason being, God wanted them to remember how difficult a situation he had delivered them from. They were walking out of slavery after 400 years. And so God wanted them to remember where they were being picked from. Glory to God. Also take note that God wanted them to know that their deliverance was not their own ability or their own righteousness. But they were delivered because of his great mercy and his great love for them. You see, that's what I want you to know. If we are ever we are going to survive the plagues that are happening on earth today, it's not going to be by human wisdom. And let me tell you this is the reason why you need not to rely on human wisdom and expertise. Because it reaches a point where they fail. You can imagine how coronavirus has brought the whole world to their knees. Men are so scared of the demonic activity that is taking place right now. I've always told you that life is spiritual. And the spirits are more intelligent than men. And so those that have been relying on science, even science has failed. Unless God is to give a solution to men again, no help can come to man. And that's why for us we have the solution. And you need to tell everybody, cheer up, we have the solution. What is the solution? 
we know the redemptive work of Jesus, what he did. And so the Lord wanted them to know that he is the one that brings deliverance to them. You see? And the blood that was placed on their doorposts was a sign to let them know that the lamb has been judged. It has been slain. And so even if there was any death that was coming by, that death could not come. Why? Because the blood was on the doorposts. That blood was speaking for them. And letting them know, no, you cannot come here. Death, you cannot come here. Judgment, you cannot come here. Why? Because the lamb had been slain. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And so God always protected those that are covered by the blood from the plagues and calamities. You see? Such a plague like this that is ravaging the earth. What is our safety? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is our safety. The blood of Jesus is our protection. The blood of Jesus is all that we need. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And this meal, I mean this meal that they ate also, was also a declaration unto them that that night they are walking out of bondage. And therefore every bondage over their lives was broken. Today, as we are going to take Holy Communion, there are some of you, your families have been going through troubles. There have been generational curses that have been tormenting your families. There have been issues that you don't like in your families. Diseases that, you, that have been ravaging the finances of your family. Deaths, name it, all circles of bondages. Tonight, as we take Holy Communion, they will all be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you believe it, say Amen. I say the shout, Amen. Glory to God. I want to know that you're participating with me. I want to see your comments. Shout, Hallelujah. I want to hear your Hallelujah to the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Now, why is it important for us to take Holy Communion? Why must we take Holy Communion? What is the power of Holy Communion? I have seven reasons why we must take Holy Communion. At such a time as this. Number one. Let's read the scripture. The book of St. Luke. St. Luke. Chapter number 22. St. Luke 22. And verses number 19. Glory to God. I know somebody is being protected. God is healing someone today. Let me tell you, with this, we are safe and secure in the ark of God. We are safe and secure. Nothing will happen to you. No coronavirus, no flu, no cough, no fever, no headache. Many of you, let me tell you, I'm prophesying to you now. As you get on to injecting your system with the Holy Communion, from today onwards, for the next 30 days, HIV will clear up in your blood in the name of Jesus. Name it, whether cancer, whether tumors, whether diabetes, if you have blocked tubes, after these 30 days of Holy Communion, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power of Holy Communion is going to set you free from your bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it right now. St. Luke chapter 22, I'm reading to you verses number 19. The Bible says, And he took bread and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, you see, it, 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 let me just stop there. It says, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. He said, for the bread, the bread, he said, this is my body, which is given for you. He said, everything is given for you. Why did he give us his body? What is the importance of his body? Number one, Holy Communion protects you from the judgment of the world. Holy Communion protects you from the judgment of the world. You can check that from Exodus chapter number 12 
from verses 1 to 14. I just read you that portion of the scripture. Exodus 12 verses 1 to 14. Genesis chapter 3 verses 21. Right now when plagues are going on in the world, God told Israel, he said the age of death is coming to town. But when he sees blood on your doorpost, it will bypass you. And so when you take Holy Communion, you are protected from judgment, from the plagues, the epidemics that are wreaking havoc on earth, whether infectious diseases, whether sicknesses and diseases that come from germs, that come from whatever, name the source, whatever way in which they come from, the judgments that are coming on earth, whether premature death, whether accidents, no matter the orchestrations of the plagues that are coming in in these last times, when you take Holy Communion, it's like that blood that was put on the doorpost. When the angel of death is moving about, he will jump over you. He will pass over you, pass over your household. Why? Because Jesus was already judged. And so when you take Holy Communion, you're saying the judgments that would have befallen me, that would have befallen my household, were all placed on Jesus. Jesus was judged for my sake. And because he was judged for my sake, I do not need to go again through another judgment. And therefore you are safe and sound because the Lord Jesus was judged. And so Holy Communion is the remedy for coronavirus that is ravaging mankind today. The judgment of coronavirus, the plague of coronavirus, the demonic activity of coronavirus, you are saved through the communion. And so every day when we'll be taking communion, every day as we take Holy Communion, you are simply proclaiming, Christ Jesus was judged for your sake. He was judged for your sake. Glory to God. Number two, Holy Communion brings you out of bondage. It brings you out of bondage. Holy Communion brings you out of bondage. Do you remember? He told them, say, take Holy Communion. Put your shoes ready. Every plague God had performed to bring Israel out could not bring them out. But when he told them to slaughter the lamb and he told them to eat the bread, as they broke the bread and as they took the, the, the blood of the lamb, the Bible says instantly that same night, Pharaoh told them, leave, go, go, go away from here. Go away from this land. After 400 years of bondage, there are some of you, your family could have been in bondage. Your finances are in bondage. Your health is in bondage. Whatever bondage that you're going through, as you take Holy Communion, this one month as we are beginning from today, as you take Holy Communion, every bondage over your life shall be broken. Hallelujah. I believe it's the same thing. As we take Holy Communion, the power of coronavirus will be broken. Not only coronavirus, but any other ailments, any other bondage, be it financial, be it physical, be it in your family, be it in your health, wherever you are, that bondage shall be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you believe it, I receive in the name of Jesus. Number three, Holy Communion. Did I give you the scripture? It's still Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. But the real verse is verses number 11. You'll find it there. Number three, Holy Communion brings divine help to the sick. Holy Communion brings divine help to the sick. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 53, Verses number 5. Isaiah 53 verses 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. First Peter chapter number 2. Verses number 24. The Bible says, it says, Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes 
ye way healed. Glory to God. I want to tell you the Lord Jesus. The Bible says he was beaten until there was no skin that was left on him. And the reason why he was beaten prophetically, the Bible says he was beaten for our sicknesses, for our diseases, for our infirmities. And so for every stripe that he undertook, it was for the healing of the sick. I want you to believe God for your healing. If there is any sickness, let me warn you, if there is any sickness that you trust doctors to heal you on, I want to tell you doctors don't have a cure. No one should ever deceive you that human help is enough. Human help is not enough. They may try to help you to prevent, to give a relief, but really healing comes from God. And the Bible says Jesus Christ was beaten for your sake. Are you suffering from HIV? Are you having blood pressure? Are you having ulcers? Is it arthritis? Is it a heart disease? What is your condition? Maybe some of you are watching me, you could have been infected by coronavirus. Whatever it is that is tormenting your life, the answer is in Holy Communion. That is the reason why Jesus laid down his life. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. He was broken so that you and me can receive divine help. And today, if there be any sick, whatever sickness that you have, I feel the anointing of God to heal the sick flowing right now. As we take Holy Communion, God will bring healing into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Number four. Holy Communion adds life to your health and years to your life. In other words, it is for longevity. If you want to live long, the answer is in Holy Communion. The Bible says in the book of St. John, St. John chapter number, number 6, this is what the Lord Jesus said. St. John chapter number 6, I'm reading to you verses number 33. I'm just going to be jumping over as I read. Verses 33 to 35. It says, for the, for the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Then say they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. I'm jumping to verses number 48. Verses number 48. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I am, the, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, I want to read verses number 53. It says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his cup, you, shall, you, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eats me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers 
did eat manna and are dead. He that eats of this bread shall live forever. If I may tell you, do you know that when Israel came out of Egypt, there was none who was sick, there was none who was weary. For 40 years and 40 nights, I mean 40 years, day and night, they were strong, their shoes grew on them, their clothes grew on them, they were healthy, there was none who was feeble, everyone was strong to the end. Remember one day I told you in church, I'll call it, at 84 years of age, the man said, I am still very strong to fight like a 40-year young man. Why? They ate manna, a food that was given of angels. But the Bible says they all died. But Jesus said, if you eat me, how do we eat the Lord? We eat the Lord's body through the breaking of the bread. We drink the Lord's blood through the cup that we take. He says, if you do that, you have real life. So what is it? Those of you who do not want to age, you are ever taking anti-aging properties. Let me tell you, there is one which is very effective and is very cheap. It is Holy Communion. When you take it, your youth is renewed like the eagles. You don't die young. Nothing can eliminate your life. No sickness, no headache, no flu, no fever, no virus, no nothing. Hallelujah. You will simply live to the end of your life. And when your time comes that you're fed up of this world and you want to go to glory, you simply lie down and give up the ghost. Minus a headache, minus a bucket, minus a heartache, minus sugar, minus no nothing. There is a way, a better way to go to glory. Hallelujah. Holy communion, when you take it, it adds life to your ears and ears to your life. And that means you become totally immune. You get a divine immunity. Nothing can touch you. Glory to God. You can go to a place where there are people who are infected with coronavirus, but instead of being infected, you, you kill the virus. Hallelujah. That's what we are. We kill diseases. Why? Because we are the Spirit of God at work in us. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to say go look for coronavirus or whatever. No. I'm just trying to tell you, when you live by the principle of divine health, there is divine immunity that is given you by God to live long, to live your life to the full. Glory to Jesus. I want to prophesy to you, those of you that have been sickly, God is going to raise you up. You will see your children's 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 children. Even those of you that were told to live positively, forget about it. You will live to see your children's 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 children to the glory of God. You will live a very long life. Whether you want 120, it's available to you. Whether you want 85, it's available to you. 190, it's available to you. It's not up to God to decide that. It is you. Take communion and receive humility and receive Im immunity. You become immune all your days. Glory to God. And that's what God wants you to have. You see these things I'm telling you, I'm living them. I'm living in these realities. Glory to God. All the time when I feel anything happening to me, I take Holy Communion. And I'm renewed and I'm strong and I'm still going on. Glory to God. In the same way today, I'm going to put that culture into you of taking Holy Communion every day. You will live to the full all your days. Glory to God. Number five, Holy Communion takes away the desire to sin. Holy, Holy Communion strengthens you against sin. It gives you strength against sin. There are some of us, we are ever on and off, continuously repenting all the time. Lord, I've sinned again, I've sinned again, I've sinned again. I've said, oh, please. You're either saying, forgive me or give me, forgive me or give me. I want to tell you, you want your faith to rise above that sin. You have that weakness that is disturbing you. What gives you strength is Holy Communion. The Bible says in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verses 8. It says, it says, 
verses 18 rather, verses 18, not verses 8, verses 18. It says, for Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Do you understand what the Word of God says? It says Christ took your place of sin. He took your place of weakness. He took your place of unjustification. And so when you proclaim his death over your life, you are quickened by the Spirit. You come alive. You come alive. And the desires of sin, the temptations are killed from your life. They begin to die one after another, one after another, one after another. Why? Because Holy Communion energizes you, gives you spiritual strength to withstand the sin. Glory to God. If there is a temptation that easily ensnares you, run and begin to take Holy Communion. You say, I know there are some places where the religious say, please, if you have a sin, don't come and take Holy Communion. Now, who strengthens the other? Is it the weak who strengthens the strong or the strong that strengthens the weak? You know? When you're weak, who do you lie on to? You go to allies. You look for allies. You see, that's why you have the nations of the world alive. You see, they say, for me alone, I cannot stand. But you come and stand with me. When you stand with me, your enemy is my enemy. My enemy is your enemy. And in the same way, that's how God wants us to. Jesus does not condemn us. He wants us to stand, to lean on him because he's the one that overcame the world. He's the one that overcame sin. He overcame temptations. And so, my friend, when you're weak, when you see sin is ever ensnaring you, your faith has become weak, you are under condemnation, you are under temptations, begin to take Holy Communion. Begin to take Holy Communion. The more you take Holy Communion, the more stronger you will become against sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Find number six. Holy Communion unites you to the Lord in faith and his body. Holy Communion brings the unity of the body of Christ. Remember, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians Chapter number 10 and verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the Lord of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Our unity is very important. What keeps us united as a body of Christ is Holy Communion. And let me tell you the reason why our unity is concerned. Our unity, whatever we decide on earth, it is done in heaven. Whatsoever we refuse on earth, it is refused in heaven. And so our oneness together as a body of Christ is what gives us power and authority and dominion over circumstances of life. And so when we break Holy Communion, we proclaim that we are victors over Satan, over the works of the devil, over the world, and all his corrupting influences. And we are one. We are preserved in the Lord. And finally, Holy Communion, we take it to pass judgment to the enemies of the Lord. Remember Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. Israel... And God, they cried to God. God came, performed the miracles. He did so many mighty works. He did so many. But the Bible says, after all those works that he did, Pharaoh could not let them go. Until when they performed one final act. When they took Passover. When they took Passover. The moment they took Passover, the Bible says, Pharaoh was jumped from his house to all the taskmasters that had held them captive. Somebody died. Somebody died. And it was through that death, that judgment, that they let go Israel. 
Can I tell you what? Today that disease will be judged, that curse will be judged, that death will be judged, that suffering that you've gone through, whatsoever orchestrated it will be judged. And God will make a way for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Now, very quickly, as we prepare to take Holy Communion, how do we take Holy Communion? How do we take Holy Communion? Maybe I will share this in the second segment. Let's take a break as everybody gets your Holy Communion. Get your communion, get the bread, get the cup, father, mother, children, everybody get bread around, set everything in order. I'm giving you a short, short time to prepare your bread, to prepare your, your communion, and then I teach you how to take Holy Communion together. So prepare your elements now. Go get things in order now. I'm just giving you one minute to put yourself in order as, you, as we prepare to take Holy Communion. So let's go for a break as you're putting yourself in order to receive Holy Communion now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you're coming back, I want to read you a scripture. How do we take Holy Communion? Remember, we are going to be taking Holy Communion every day from today until when we finish these programs. We are going to be taking Holy Communion. So we'll take Holy Communion today, tomorrow, every day, every single day. In our services, we will take Holy Communion every day, every single day, until the end of all this trouble that we are going through. And so I want you to prepare to do this in your family. But I need to read a scripture to prepare you. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians 11 verses number 17 to 34. It's a long portion, but I'm going to read as you follow. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 17 to 34. It says, Now in this that I decree, that I declare unto you, I praise you not. That you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating, in eating, everyone take before other his own supper, and one is hungry, another, another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise you, the church of God, and shame them, and have not, that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord his death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily, eats and brings damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another, 
And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. The rest I will set in order when we meet again physically. Hallelujah. Now, Paul laid in a few points that I want you to take note. Number one, Holy Communion is not a remedy for hunger. And so you're not just going to get a piece of food and you say, I'm going to eat Holy Communion, this Holy Communion, and then you eat all the huge amount of food that is there as hunger because you are hungry. You know, Paul said, if you do that, you are eating the Lord's body unworthily. And therefore, you are taking judgment to yourself. And I say it is for that reason that many are sickly and many die. Because in this church, they were eating it for hunger. When it was time for Holy Communion, they say it's another time for a happening. It's another sumptuous meal to be eaten. You see? And so Holy Communion is not a remedy for hunger. We don't eat it because we are hungry. Number two... You must be in one accord if you are doing it more than one person. You must be in one accord. Not everybody doing what they are doing. This one is on WhatsApp. This one is on whatever. And you are saying you are taking Holy Communion. No. You must all be of one accord. You must all agree. And say we are taking the Lord's body. So everybody stops whatever that they do. And you come together to take of the Lord's table. Number three, you must discern the Lord's body. That means that see the Lord in that bread. In this bread, see the Lord. This one is just mere bread. When it is yet, it's mere bread. But when I take it like this and I'm saying I'm taking it to remembrance of the Lord, I should see Jesus here. This is the body of the Lord that was broken for me. When you begin to think about the Lord, what he did for you, how he suffered on the cross, how he paid for your sins, where he picked you from in his mercy and compassion. Some of you picked you from drunkenness, he picked you from immorality, he picked you from sickness, he picked you from poverty. Wherever he picked you from, you take it and you meditate on the Lord where he picked you from. Glory to God. And so, you have to discern that this is his body. And remember what he did. Don't joke about it. Don't just take it call us and say, you know, we are taking Holy Communion. Because I'm not there, you think the Lord is not there. The Lord is where you are. You don't have to be in church for you to do this. You need to know where you are. The Lord is there. And so you discern it. You remember what he did for you. You, you, you think you pond about him, his sacrifice, his suffering, his shame that went through. For your sake, not for himself, but for your sake he did it. Glory to God. And so, when you hold this bread, as you take a hold of this bread, confess what he did for you. Lord Jesus, I am breaking this bread in remembrance of your body. That was broken for me. As I break this body. During this time of this calamity. I proclaim that he judged for my sake. So that I may be whole. So that I may be forgiven. So that I may be justified. You see. That's what you proclaim. And in the same way you take the cup. And you confess over his blood. That his blood was shed for the remission of your sins. And so all your sins were taken away. There is no more sin that you have to pay for. His blood paid for all your sins. And so you proclaim that he shed his blood for the remission of your sins. And when you received him, you received the remission of your sins. Glory to God. And then you eat it in faith and in reverence. Don't eat while you're cooking, you know, I'm taking a little communion and you're mixing things. No. Leave aside everything. For that moment, ponder upon the Lord what he did for you. And you take it in reverence of him. Glory to God. And then after, give thanks for what he has done. Now, who takes holy communion? You know, some people say, you know, I have not waited, so I cannot take holy communion. 
You know, I sinned today, so I will not take Holy Communion. No. Holy Communion is taken by every believer in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus as your personal Lord and your personal Savior, Holy Communion is for you. For every believer in Jesus. I didn't say for those who are waiting, for those who are not wedded, for whatever. I didn't say all that. I say for all believers in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Then you are a candidate for Holy Communion. Glory to God. And so right now, we are going to take Holy Communion. In your house, I want you to take bread. Take that piece of bread. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you did for me on the cross. I reverence the finished works of Christ. This is your bread. And in this bread, I discern the body of the Lord Jesus. The one who was broken for my sake. The one who strives, by whose stripes I am healed. As I break this bread, I proclaim the death of Jesus. That he died for my sake. That I may live. He was broken and he was wounded. That I may be healed. I thank you, Lord, for what you did for me. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Many of you will be healed as you take this bread. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your children, wherever they are. Right now, we are partaking of the cup of the Lord. If there be any that have sinned, let their sins be forgiven. If there be any that is weak, let them be strengthened. As we break this bread, whatever medium that we are using, Lord, I pray, honor our communion. For we proclaim that Jesus, our Lord, was broken for our sake. And by his stripes, we were healed. And through his death, we were justified. And we received the life. And therefore we receive the repair of our bodies from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. And we receive immunity against diseases, against infirmities, against bondages, against curses, against every dilapidating impact and effect of the corrupting elements of this world. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of communion that is coming to us now. In Jesus' mighty name. And you say, Amen. Break that bread in faith and in holy reverence. Eat it now. Take the cup. Say this prayer after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am drinking this cup in remembrance of the shed blood of Jesus on the cross for my sake. I discern that this is the cup of the Lord and I drink it in remembrance of Him. Thank you, Father, for that blood gives me remission of sins. And brings me closer to you. In the name of Jesus. Father I bless that cup that your children are using right now. That they are going to partake. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. That was shed for the remission of our sins. And for the new covenant. Therefore let miracles, signs and wonders. Take place as we take this cup. Let the sick be healed. Let demons leave them. Let fear go. Let broken, brokenness be, be, be mended. Let restoration come. Let deliverance happen. Let the power of God fall upon them. Let them be intoxicated with the anointing of the Spirit that gives life. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Drink that cup in faith in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands toward heaven. Begin to thank him for his mercy. Begin to thank him for his grace. I believe, I believe there is power in the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. It has power to save. I believe, I believe there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of the Lord. Receive right now the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be delivered from all your afflictions, from sickness and diseases. I release the power of God right now. There is a person with the itchy eyes. God is healing your eyes right now. The power of God is touching your eyes in the name of Jesus. There is another person with a problem with your back. There is an injury in your back. The Lord is healing you right now. Receive healing in your back. You're feeling a heat going through you. The wind of life is blowing over you now. Receive healing on your back in the name of Jesus. There is another person with a pain on your joints. Receive healing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is a person you are sweating so profusely. That is the power of God healing you. In the name of Jesus be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. There is a person suffering from malaria. God is healing you of that malaria. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is healing you. Receive healing. Receive miracles right now. There is a person watching me. You are so highly indebted. God is delivering you from dead right now. I see a miracle coming to you in 72 hours. God is performing a 72 hour miracle for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive healing right now. Receive a breakthrough. Receive a financial breakthrough. Receive a testimony. Miracles are happening right now in the name of Jesus. Do not be afraid. There is a person here. You're worried about your business transaction that you're doing. As a result of these things, it has affected your business. God says, do not be afraid. It will go through. It will go through. There is profiting in what you're doing. Your hands are blessed by the power of the Holy Ghost. God is healing someone right now. Get up in the name of Jesus. There is a person, your fever is right now. The anointing is moving on you. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. Stretch up yourself in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Let the pain leave you. Let the infirmity go. I command that heartburn to leave you. Someone is suffering from heartburn. God is healing that heartburn right now in the name of Jesus. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. God is healing someone's ears. Your ears are being healed. That pain in the ears is being healed. In the name of Jesus, you've been having pain. Every time you pick calls, you feel a lot of pain in your ears. God is healing them in the name of Jesus. Receive healing in Jesus' mighty name. I decree a miracle over you right now. I decree restoration. There is a person, God is restoring you. Everything that you lost, God is giving it back to you. A hundredfold by the power of the Holy Ghost. Brethren, the anointing is flowing. Speak in tongues wherever you are. Receive a miracle. Receive a testimony. Yes, that job is yours. Someone did interviews. That job is yours. Yes, it is yours. Do not be afraid. God has given it to you freely by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every bad message in your life and I send good news unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive miracles right now. Devils are running. Devils are running. Devils are running. Live in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I decree by the Spirit of God, you are protected from the epidemic that is ravaging the world right now. You are protected in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You are saved in the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. I feel so strong that somebody needs to receive the Lord. Wherever you are, raise your hands toward heaven and say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. You died on a cross for my sins. And you rose from the dead for my justification. 
Right now by faith I proclaim that you're my Lord and Savior. I receive you into my heart. I am born again right now. I receive salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Brethren, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. I feel the anointing flowing right now. God is blessing in a mighty way. There is a family that has been under confusion. Peace is coming to your house today. Peace is coming to your house in the name of Jesus. Don't give up. There is a person you've been contemplating giving up. I don't know what you want to give up on, but there's nothing to give up on. God is telling me to tell you, this is not time to give up. This is time to trust Him. This is time to set your gaze on Him. It will happen. It will happen. Even before April, you will see it. I don't know what it is, but the Spirit of God is asking me to tell you that. Before April, you will see it in the name of Jesus. I call angels to action on your behalf. Let there be testimonies everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God Almighty. Amen and amen. I believe the Lord has blessed you today. Now it's time for us to take our offerings. It is time for taking our offerings. Remember, we are in worship. We are worshiping God. Wherever you are, take your tithe. Take your offering. Take your seeds. If you're fulfilling a pledge, take it now. Take it now. Glory to God. Many brethren have been giving to the Lord and have been so faithfully giving to the Lord. And so there are numbers on your screen. The mobile money numbers are on your screen. The, 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 the accounts are there on the screen for the bank. Both the dollar account, the, 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 the shillings account, the partners account, they are all on your screens. What I expect of you is to get those details. Get that offering. Some of you may not be able to give this evening, but tomorrow morning, carry that offering to the bank. Carry that offering to the church. You can take it to church. There is an offering basket in church. Carry the offering and take it to church. Some of you have not been there, or I don't know, ever since whatever, you don't even know how church looks like. There is an offering basket in church. You will find water, wash your hands, take your offering, drop it there. You need an envelope, Come and pick it from the church or the office. Pick your envelope. Pick your details. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is giving time. I want you to give to the Lord now as I make the announcements. Glory to God. You can see the information is there. And I am giving my offering now. I'm giving my offering now. So I want you to take your offering wherever you are and begin to give. I'm going to bless it. I'm going to bless it as we give. Now, as we are doing our giving, I want you to take note of the following. Every day from 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., 10 to 10.30, I am on Spirit FM radio station, 96.6 FM, ministering to you every single day the Word of God. And so I want you to tell your friends, tell your loved ones, that pastor is on Spirit FM. And therefore, tune in so that the word of God can bless you, so that you can be blessed by the word of God. Glory to God. And secondly, uh, I also want you to know that every day we have lunch hours, beginning from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, every single day. Let's say a quarter to 1. I'm always live praying. We are praying. Every day we are praying. This epidemic will live our land. The Bible says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So wherever you are, join me online. Now I'm working out on how to keep our viewers on YouTube on so that you can participate on YouTube, those that are not on Facebook. And so tomorrow we'll get a solution and fix it for you. Glory to God. But please, every day we are going to be praying and we'll be taking Holy Communion. We'll be taking Holy Communion. Please forgive the background noise. You know, we are in, I'm in the office. I'm in the office. Forgive the background noise. But please pay attention to the things that I'm telling you. 
Glory to God. And also remember, I told you men, all men of the church, the church has got, the rods have got to be worked on. By the time we resume fellowship, our rods have got to be fixed. Men move very fast. And all daughters, your duty is to work on the ceiling of the church. Please move with your leaders, sending your contribution to your leaders so that they are able to begin the works immediately. Glory to God. By the time we resume our fellowship, the house of God has got to be more beautiful than when we left fellowship. Glory to God. Glory to God Almighty. Amen. And those of you that took your pledges, whether you took your pledge for supporting the building project of my spiritual father, or you took a pledge for any other thing that we, we plan to do, please, this is the only week I want to send that pledge to my spiritual father. You know, I would have traveled to God, I have sent Mama, but now the conditions cannot allow. But that does not mean that we slack down in our commitments to the Lord. And so if you took a pledge, fulfill it immediately. Glory to God. And remember, we'll be meeting even on Friday, same time, Friday service, Sunday service will be happening every day from 9 o'clock to midday, same time, same place, same venues, our houses. Glory to God. Glory to God. But remember, I pray blessing over your offering. I pray blessing over your tithe. I pray blessing over your seed. I bless the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Let prosperity come to you in abundance. Let heaven open over your life. The Lord bless the works of your hands. The Lord increase you and enlarge you. Listen, the Spirit of God spoke to me this morning. And he told me, he said, look, when you see this Christ happening like this, there's going to be a massive wealth transfer. From the children of the world to the children of God. There is a shaking. All this shaking is meant to cause the children of God to flourish and to prosper. And so I want you to raise your faith for prosperity. Don't listen to what the world says. The world has its own story. We have our own story. And our story is the word of God. During moments like this, it is time when God performs his miracles of prosperity on his children. And therefore, get ready for wealth transfer. Go ahead and give your seed. Go ahead and give your tithe. Go ahead and give your offerings. If you cannot give it on mobile money, take it to the bank. If you cannot take it to the bank, take it to church. There is an offering basket in church. If you cannot give it in church, give it in office. Bring it to office but give your offering. Because any worship service that we have, if we don't give offerings to God, it is just a political rally. It is just a social gathering. It is just a religious gathering. But the blessings of that service will not come to us. It will not be worship. Therefore, give to God right now with all your heart. Whatever you wanted to give, whether a thousand shillings, give it. Whether 10,000, give it. Whether 500,000, give it. Whatever amount, give it. Whatever you wanted to give, it belongs to God. Give it to the Lord right now. And as we are giving, I want to sign out. I will see you again. And uh, I will see you tomorrow in the lunch hour for prayers. Stay blessed. Stay protected. Please make sure you follow every health precaution that you will be given. And uh, you need my help. The numbers are available on the screen. And I'm introducing another number on WhatsApp. Soon and very soon, I'll be letting you know that number that you'll be able to send me a WhatsApp message anytime and I'll respond to you accordingly to the glory of God Almighty. I believe you're blessed. I believe you're healed. Share your testimonies. Share your victories. Let's make this world a happy world. No matter what. Spread happiness to the glory of God. I bless your household. I bless the name of our Lord upon you. I bless favor upon you. I bless prosperity upon you. The blessings of the Lord rest on you. The name of our Lord shine on you. You are protected from coronavirus, from every infection, from every disease, from every pain. You are preserved and you are protected. I speak a blessing on you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and a sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom.